Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for being God and God all by yourself. Lord, we feel you moving. I feel something already. God, I feel you moving. God, let fresh wind begin to blow over this room and through this ministry. God, I speak by faith. The spirit of the living God is invading their house. The spirit of the living God is invading their house. I'm going to say it again. The spirit of the living God is invading their house. Move God. Move God. Move God. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what type of weight you're carrying. But I speak by faith. It's coming off of you today. Somebody ought to shout today, today. A hundred people ought to type today, today. It's coming off of me today. Matter of fact, just shout when I get to you. Depression is coming off of me today. Low self-esteem is coming off of me today. Double-mindedness is coming off of me today. Insecurity is coming off of me today. Slothfulness is coming off of me today. The spirit of timidity is coming off of me today. I activate every spiritual gift that God has buried deep within the crevices of who you are. We stir up the gift right now. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Yes, God. You got up so we could get up. You got up so we could get up. Today is more than an Easter speech. Today is more than an Easter speech. Today is more than Easter eggs. Today is more than good outfits. But today marks the day that the devil lost. Today marks the day that he went to hell, took back the key, gave death an eviction notice, and said, I got up with not some power, not with a little power, but with all power. Somebody shout that God got up. Yeah! I'm giving you 30 seconds. I need you to type in the comments whatever you're believing God for. Before the message, we have enough faith to say it's all ready done. It's all ready done. Fall fresh on us. He shot out at my mama. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Yeah. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Yes, God. He shot. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Yeah, my mama, my mama. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. I feel something. Spirit of the living God, rain down your favor, your peace. Spirit of the living God, yeah. Devil, you lose again. Devil, you lose again. You lose again. And every believer said, Amen. From home and here, from Birmingham to Baltimore, from Texas to Tuscaloosa, from the Bahamas to the beach, I want you to give God the best praise that you got. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Sit down, man. So we are, we are here. We are here to celebrate Resurrection Sunday. 
Now, I'm going to say that again, and some of y'all going to get excited. If we were at the Final Four, you would be shouting. If we were at the Super Bowl, you would be shouting. It's certain days that every real believer should get excited about when you say, unless you're a CME saint. You know what a CME saint is. That's Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. You only come three times a year, so you have to get your whole shout in today. But for those of us who know the power of God, see, so many people shout over his resurrection that they gloss over his crucifixion. Yeah, we're so, in, we're so clueless to the existential reality that he went through pain and heartache and he went through suffering and he went through trials. This is cold-blooded just for me. That's cold, Jay. He did it just for me. And, 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 and when you personalize, I'm trying not to get excited. You got to keep in mind I haven't preached in a couple weeks. But when you personalize his death for your pain, it just does something crazy for you. And my preacher, it's, it's a difference when mama and daddy brought something home for the house versus when they brought something home for you. Seven people out of type. He died for me. He, he, he died for me. I'm going to see if I can find my first shout of Easter Sunday. But if he died for me, that means he got up for me. Somebody type just for me. And I'm not talking about a perm kit when I say just for me. I'm not talking about a perm kit. I'm talking about he died and he rose just for me. In, in today's text, let, let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke, that beautiful physician. Let's go to Luke. In today's text, and shout out to the best experience department on the face of the planet, all of them for coming two hours early and getting temperature checks and doing all the things they had to do just to be a part of Easter. Pastor Mike, why did you do it? I miss my people. Got a chance to worship with the family for a minute. So let's jump right into Luke. In Luke, this beautiful Luke and passage, we are introduced to a little man and a big God. Yeah, we are introduced to a little man and a big God. Kim, this is cold-blooded because one of the common misnomers or mistakes that is being made across the country is that when I go places, they call me Mr. Big. <laughs> because of the song Big. So when I go places, they might not know my full name. They say, oh, you Mr. Big. When I do an interview, they say, you Mr. Big. I said, no, I'm not Mr. Big. That, that's a whole nother person. But one thing that's so incredible that I believe is being misunderstood when we do sing big, we're not singing about big stuff. We're singing about what a big God can do. Did you catch what I just said? In today's text, we meet a little man with the big God. And this particular story is closely associated with the blind beggar found in Luke chapter 18. See, Luke chapter 19 is where I'm going to preach today, but you cannot properly preach Luke 19 until you tiptoe back into the corridors of Luke chapter 18. 18 being the number of bondage, Tristan. 18 being the number of bondage. I find it somewhat comical, but somewhat inspirational that in Luke chapter 18, a brother gets his sight or he gets privileges. He was blind to a certain level of reality. And when he bumps into Jesus, his perspective changes. His access, I feel God already, his access changes. I believe you become somewhat grown at the age of what? 18. Once you turn 18, you remember being a kid. You couldn't wait to turn what? 18 because you felt at 18 you got something. But then all of us were in for a rude awakening because the moment you turn 18, it's like they said, wait till you turn 21. So you were grown enough to make a decision, but not old enough to be responsible for it. I don't think you heard what I just said. It's, it's another level of accountability. Luke chapter 18, we meet a blind beggar. This blind beggar is sitting by the roadside. He hears that Jesus is passing by. So I want you to see Jesus is sort of on this tour. He's on a tour. I know we're not going to call it that, but for the sake of the message, he's on a tour. He's on a rock star tour. Can you imagine Jesus? Let's bring this from antiquity to modernity, properly harmonizing hermeneutics with relevant homiletics. Let's build this bridge from then till now so I can put it in your lap so you can see the Bible. That's what we specialize at at Rock City. We make the Bible uh, visible. We make it practical. So imagine Jesus is on tour. Him and 12 of his partners going from city to city. All right. Oh, this is beautiful. Remember Forrest Gump? Yeah. Who, who remembers Forrest Gump? 
You remember when he found out about Jenny? He woke up that morning and he went outside. Then he went back outside. You know that. Then all of a sudden, Forrest Gump just what? Just started running. And, and what was incredible was he started running alone. He started running alone. He never asked for company, but he never explained his why. He didn't know his where. He just knew his what. I'm going to say it again. He never explained his why. He did not know his where. He only knew his what. All he knew is, I'm going to go old school. Something told me. I got to stop, stop, Corey. Something told me to run. And when he started running, what happened? Every city he went to, people would start running with him. What was crazy was, this is sort of what's happening in the text. Jesus starts out on his mission and he starts building disciples, but then crowds begin to follow him. This is critical. So when he's on this tour in Luke 18, we see a blind brother. Luke 19, we see Zacchaeus. Then we see some leopards. Now, what do we see that we can take and make applicable, Jason, to our life? That we see a principle or a pattern. Hear me when I say this. Be careful of what people say. You have can watch actions, but you can count on patterns. I don't think you heard what I just said. Anybody can say something out their mouth and anybody can fake long enough. But if you can't pick up on a person's pattern, you can determine and dictate what's real and what's not. This is so critical. What happens? We see a pattern that outsiders or outcasts were more receptive to the gospel. That's cold blooded. I need you to catch this. This is why, this is why Denzel and I thank God for all you're doing in Tuscaloosa, my boy. The growth I'm seeing in you, I'm excited about it from afar. I ask Pastor Hollis about you all the time and I see the growth. I never forget the first time I saw you on the stream. I said, who is that right there? I said, Pastor Mike, she dope, man. She cold blooded. She anoints. I was so excited. But the thing that people can't figure out about Rock City, whether Pastor Mike standing here or not, people are still tuning in. Why, Pastor Mike? Because we are effective at reaching people that other people may not deem acceptable. We, we have mastered or we're trying our best to master the art of practically presenting the gospel in a way that you can take it and make it applicable to your life. So when we tiptoe into Luke chapter 19, verse 1, I see something in verse 1 that's worth preaching. It says he entered Jericho and was passing through. Now, now, Jason, I'm trying not to preach, but it's Easter, and I feel like shouting already. Why, Pastor Mike? Because most people don't even see the shout in verse 1. Most people will speed past verse 1 because they're going to say to themselves, Tristan, why would you shout about verse 1? It ain't nothing worth preaching about it, but I see something in verse 1 that's worth shouting. I see Curtis from Destiny City, from Montgomery, from Tuscaloosa to Birmingham to Montgomery. I see something, Curtis. What's that? If I want to come to the gump but I live in Tuscaloosa I got to pass through Birmingham and I don't know who I'm preaching to early but your enemies your neighbors and your family would treat you better if they realize in order for God to get to you he got to pass through I need seven people to just shout stick close to me somebody ought to shout stick close to me because if you stick close to me long enough you're going to get a blessing because God going to pass through your section to get to my sit down. The text says, the, the text, look, look at this now. The text says he was passing through. Somebody say passing through. Jesus does not have a Twitter. Jesus does not have a Facebook. Jesus does not have an assistant nor does Jesus have a calendar with dates on it. No, Jesus has no technology. They have no idea, watch this, when he's coming or when he's leaving, here's the most important part, or if he's ever coming back. So passing through is not something to be taken lightly. This is, this is a now or never moment. 
I, I don't know who's going to receive this, but I want to submit and suggest to somebody that the next decision will be one that affects your life forever. That something in your spirit is telling you, I can't play. I can't drag my feet. I got to get focused. I'm going to have church by myself because this is my moment. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but seven people out of just type, this is my moment. Look around the room and just tell them, this is my moment. I can't play because this is my moment. I can't go out with y'all because this is my moment. I can't drag my feet because this is my moment. I played three years ago. I played with it two years ago, but 2021 gonna be different. Seven people out of type, this year will be different. Why? I'm not playing. I'm not dragging my feet. I'm not procrastinating. I'm not talking about it. I'm not making announcements. I'm not making statuses. You just gonna watch me work. Cause this is my moment. This is critical. This is so critical. Why is this so critical? This is so critical because for me, I don't know who's gonna receive this. Holy Spirit said, Michael, this is a setup season. Yeah, this is a setup season. I, I was tripping. Nothing's on TV, Tez, and I miss you, man. I ain't seen you in church in a year. Tez, and, and I miss I may have to call you up for a skit. Half the church been waiting to see Tez come on stage for a skit. Tez, this is cold blood. I need you to catch this. I'm watching NFL Network, and as I'm watching NFL Network, I see a long pass go for 70-yard touchdown, and the announcer says something that arrested my faculties. The announcer said, see, most people are gonna celebrate the touchdown, but they missed the play before. I said, well, I, I'm, so I, I turned the volume up. I said, what is he talking about? He said, go back two plays. He said, if you look at it, the quarterback hands the ball off right here, but look at the action he gave. He said, when he turned left, he handed it out, boom. So on first down, it was a run. He said on second down, they did another play, but then on third down, they gave them the same action. But this time he pulled it, reached up, and because it looked similar to the previous play, he said the reason they scored the third time is because the first time was a setup. <laughs> what, what if I told you, what if I told you the last season of hell you went through was a setup? What if God strategically, because God calls this, <sighs> God calls this, all things to work together for the good of them who love God and are called according to his what? Purpose. Now, I need you to catch this. What if God strategically, because he's alpha at beginning, he's the director, the cameraman, and he's starring in the movie called Your Life. So what if I told you God strategically allowed you to get knocked down a year ago? Because he wanted the devil to see you fail in that area. So when it popped up in 2021, he would just step back and say, because it happened last time, it's going to happen this time. But they had no idea. It was a setup. <sighs> I don't know who caught what I just said right there. It's a setup season. What are you working for? What are you believing God for? What are you patiently pursuing and passionately pursuing that people around you don't have a clue because you've matured to a place where you can no longer articulate what you're chasing to immature people because immature people will get you out of focus. So you got something brewing in your heart and you laughing because folks saying you just happy as you want to be and you in your heart like <laughs> they ain't got a clue what I'm setting I'm setting it up so so hear me when I say this it's a setup season so when we see verse 2 look at what it says and there was a man called by the name Zacchaeus he was a chief tax collector and he was rich he was a chief tax collector he was a chief tax collector and he was rich now somebody say Zacchaeus Zacchaeus' name translates to mean pure or clear, pure or clear. He is a chief tax collector, which means he has prestige. Zacchaeus was a tax collector, which means he worked for Rome. He worked for Rome, which means if Rome taxed everybody 5%, because he was a chief tax collector with no, uh, with autonomy, he could tax you an extra 10% on top of the five. He could make his own rules. Because he had prestige, that means he has what? Prosperity. He's armed with three P's, P, P, P. He's, he's armed with three P's, prestige, popularity, and power. 
power. He, 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 he prestige, popularity, and power. He is a walking pandemic. I don't think you caught what I just said. He is a walking pandemic. Wherever he goes, he can rain down fear and social injustice. You can be having the best season of your life, get a knock on your door from him, and it is all over. It is a walking pandemic. I need you to catch this because it's cold-blooded. Why, Pastor Mike? Because he's rich, he has prestige, he has power, but he's small which is indicative of the fact that I pray through you can catch this. Everybody got something. I don't think you heard me. Everybody has something. That's why 2 Corinthians 12, 7 and 9 says, because of the surpassing greatness of the revelation was given to me a thorn, this is cold-blooded, in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. This is cold-blooded. Paul, God says, Paul says, God has shown me so much. He says revelation because of revelation, that which has been revealed to me. What does reveal mean? Something has been pulled over the covers, which means that which I was ignorant or blind to, I am now conscious of. That's critical. So what happens? Because God has been so good to me, he had to give me an issue. Now, here's what's crazy. I'm going to preach to this side because I'm positive they're not going to catch it. See, everybody wants to be gifted, but don't nobody want the issues. I came to preach to a hundred folk who can forget about who's watching online, who can forget about who's surrounded by you, but you can declare, I am gifted with issues. Look around you and just say, be careful. Look at everybody in your house and say, be careful. Seven of y'all out of tight, be careful. Somebody ought to just declare, be careful. Because you want my gift. You want my favor. You want my looks. You want my money. You want what I drive. You want where I live, but can't handle my issues. Can I preach to seven folk who can say, as anointed as I am, I still got some issues. As frustrated as I am, I still got some issues. Yes, I can preach you up under a table, but I got some issues that I'm dealing with. And the first thing we have to normalize in the church is the fact that God called you with issues. It is only in the church that we think because you're operating, you are deficient of issues. What if I told you sometimes the greater the gift, the greater the issue. This is why when the world or the church, have you ever noticed that even when a certain gospel artist went through something recently, the, it was the world saying, leave them alone. But it was church folk trying to throw stones because church folk have mastered the art of discretion, not deliverance. Michael, they mastered the art of discretion, Jason, not deliverance. See, church don't want you to come out of it. They want you to cover it up because I need you to sing. And what you do when you get home ain't my business. But there is a generation of people who are rising that can say, yes, you are anointed. But even with your issue, I'm wrapping you up. The prodigal son came home covered in what? Covered in what? Covered in what? You, who said mud? What, what did you say? Mess. Covered in what? Dirt. Covered in what? Pig slop. Covered in what? Slop. He came home covered in the proof that he got issues. So you want to know what's crazy about the prodigal son? When the prodigal son comes home, the oldest son starts throwing a temper tantrum. So he has issues, but he's clean. So when he walks in a room, he looks like the part because he looks good. You assume he has no issues. But when you see the prodigal son coming, you look at him and say, nasty as he is. But which one does the father run to? He runs to the one who has the issues. I, I want to give a public service announcement. This is no longer Rock City Church. This is now Rock City Wellness Center. And I want to be the first person to announce, hi, I'm Mike McClure and I got issues. 
Oh my God, I need a thousand folk not to leave me hanging and just type, I got some issues. That's why some of my single folk need to break up with whoever you with right now. Because the fact that they can't love you past your issue is the proof they ain't the one for you. Because who you going to meet who's perfect, complete, and whole? And stop allowing people to make you believe that your, pro- your discernment is an issue. Michael! See, toxic people. Toxic people, Deanna, will trick you into believing that the thing God gave you is an issue because when you can see through them, the first thing they do is attack the thing that reveals their toxicity, which is why a manipulator isolates you from your family and your friends because if I can get you on an island by yourself, you will start believing who I am, who I told you are versus who you are. You, you, you don't believe me. You, you, you don't believe me. Look at verse three. Jesus, he was unable to see Jesus because of the crowd for he was small in stature, small in stature. He has an issue, power, prestige, prosperity, but he's small. Money couldn't fix it. Status couldn't fix it. Favor couldn't fix it. I want to say something that may not be popular, Tristan, and I want to say something that may, may, may cost me to lose a couple members. Favor can't fix everything. Fa- fa- favor doesn't fix everything. Watch this. Favor only fixes what it was assigned to fix. Michael, okay. All right, who, who got $10 in your pocket? Anybody got $10? Who got $10 in the bank? Anybody? Do, do me a favor. I want you to do me a favor. When, when you go to Chuck E. Cheese, or go to Chuck E. Cheese, uh, even with the cash you got, they make you exchange it for tokens. Because although your cash is real, in the world of Chuck E. Cheese, it doesn't work there. Who's ever been overseas and had to exchange your money? So although you brought money with you, it meant something different there because favor is not a get out of jail free card. Favor is not a Trump card. See, I got some hood members who don't play Trump. If you don't ever play, is it spades? Throw your hands up. Spades. See, look at how ghetto you are. Kurt, you don't play spades. Can't you see Kurt playing spades as saved as he is? Kurt, Kurt gonna smack the card. I love you, my friend, but with all due respect, I have to. Ah, now I, I, I'm hood. I need somebody who's smacking that thing. Yeah. See, spades, see, no matter what you got, if you got a spades in your deck, Whatever you don't have, the spades trumps what you don't have. That's not favor. Favor is for what you are assigned to, not what you decide to do. Who's ever heard of Steve Jobs? He was a multi-billionaire, right? Died of cancer because it's some stuff money can't fix. COVID taught us in 2020 that favor does not exempt you from sickness. Favor does not exempt you from trials and tribulations. This brother has prestige, power, prosperity, but he's small. That's critical. His name is Zacchaeus, which means clear, but yet he cannot see. I don't think you heard what I just said. His name is clear, but yet he cannot see. I'm becoming frustrated with the existential emptiness that the body of Christ is experiencing. I'm going to say it again. I am becoming frustrated with the existential emptiness that the body of Christ is experiencing because most of us are living antithetical to what God called us to be. His name is clear, yet he has no vision. This is critical, Pastor Mike. Why? Because whenever you don't know who you are, you'll be what people tell you. Michael. So let me free you real quickly. The average person sitting in church is broke when you were called blessed. Sick when you were called healed. Losing when you were called more than a conqueror. Stressed when you were called free. Down when you were called up. Tell when you were called head. What if I argued that the average person watching the stream is suffering from a spiritual identity crisis? Oh, wow. And in most cases, an identity crisis causes a different kind of death. In most cases, an identity crisis causes a different kind of death. 
this is a death to dreams, a death. This is cold-blooded. In most cases, an identity crisis causes a different kind of death. There is a death to dreams, a death to potential, a death to relationships, a death to happiness and inner peace, and almost an overall slow death within the individual's body and being. It's common for individuals to question their value and self-worth. Leave that on the screen. Please leave that on the screen. This brother is suffering, whether he knows it or not, from a spiritual identity crisis. His name means clear, but yet he is not walking in the definition of his name. He is blocked by the crowd. He is blocked by the crowd. Why is that important, PMJ? He's blocked by the crowd, and the crowd represents two different types of people. Two different types of people. One, one, one is there because they're curious. The other is there because they're serious. Michael. One is there because he's curious. Another is there because he's serious. Make that make sense. This says Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, but it does not tell us why. He wants to see Jesus. So because it does not tell me why, it leaves me to diagnose him under two qualifications. Either he's serious or curious. Can I ask you why you stream today? Are you watching because you're curious or are you serious? Can I ask you why you got my number last week? Are you curious or are you serious? Why you don't like me but won't unfollow me? It's because you ain't serious. You're too Curious. <clears throat> Curious versus serious. Now, now this is cold blooded. Why PMJ? Because this brother is suffering. His name is clear, yet he can't see because he's being blocked by either curious or serious individuals, curious or serious individuals, which means his problem or his issue is bifold. His issue is the crowd and his condition. <clears throat> see, see, we've been talking about focus and people have been inboxing me saying, Pastor Mike, I miss being a part of Refocus. When does it start? It starts April 12th. And I tell you what, I open it up today. Today is the last day, Darius. We'll open it up because so many people are inboxing me. And the reason I need you to get focused and refocus is because when you're not refocused, you not misdiagnose, you have diagnosed. See, the unfocused have diagnosed their issue. What, what, see, what an unfocused person will do is wipe their nose, not treat the cold. <clears throat> a half-focused a half person will paint a car, not change the oil. A half-focused person will buy a fit, not pay their rent. Because, like in the words of Pastor Hollis, they're trying to be impressive, not impactful. So, so his issue is bifold. His issue is the crowd and his what? Condition. The crowd. I see, this is what we're not going to do. Not at Rock City. We're not going to be so spiritual that we ignore the fact that it's some real stuff blocking you. No. We're not going to be so spiritual that we say we can pray everything away. All the prayer you got, we still dealing with uh, uh, injustice, with the current trial happening right now for our dear brother, and it was a clear-cut case of murder. Anybody who's watched that video can see he had his knee on this neck. Get your knee off my neck. I can't breathe. No justice, no peace. And I'm sitting at home now interceding over, this, over America, over our cities, because if they do not convict this brother of what America called, the conscience of America called, a clear-cut clear case of murder, I am afraid what may break loose in this country. Why, PMJ? We are not going to ignore the crowd. Can I ask you a question? What's blocking you from seeing Jesus? <clears throat> Who in your crowd, who's a blessing to be around but a hindrance? Jesus. Somebody type fences. Fences. God's been dealing with me, James on fences and fans, fences and fans. Because I was like, God, okay, with all you're doing in my life, what might block me from seeing Jesus? And I heard the Holy Spirit say, fences and fans. Yeah. 
I said, fences? He says, no, at my house right now, I tore down a lot of trees in the back. Now I can clearly see my neighbor. And, and I'm frustrated that I did it. So now every time they're outside and I'm outside, I got to look at them. And they got to look at me. And it's like, oh, my God. It's, it's just very awkward. Now I'm forced to wave. I'm forced to tell the kids, keep it down, keep it down. And I don't want to put a fence up because it, it's not going to look right. My other neighbor said, you got to do what I did. I said, what? He said, put a botanical fence up. I said, I've never heard of that. I'm from the hood. I ain't never heard of no botanical fence. I know the big picket fence, uh, but I ain't never heard. I know the chain gate, but I ain't never heard of a botanical fence. He says, no, it's when you put enough bushes up that nature becomes a fence. Then the Holy Spirit said, Mike, there are levels to fences. There are man-made fences and God-ordained fences. There are fences that have been constructed to keep you out or keep you in. But then there are also fences that were there before you got there. This brother is dealing with a man-made fence. This is cold blood and I need you to catch this. Why PMJ? He's going through an identity crisis. And I told you in most cases, put it on the screen, Dre. I want them to see this in different kinds of death. It's an identity crisis. The first death is a death to dreams. What if I said to you, and I want to, what if I said to you, your dream died not because you didn't have money, but because you didn't have identity. It's time to get refocused. What, what, what if I told you your dream died not because you were broke, not because you didn't have a connection? Tez, what if I said your dream died because you didn't have identity? Can you, you have an iPhone, Tez? Can you pull your iPhone out for me? Can you pull your iPhone out for you? Can you open it for me? Uh, you saw what you just did? Did you put a passcode in? No, it read your identity. No, it, it read. Do you have an iPhone? Uh, pull, pull your iPhone out. Just, just, you just looked at it, right? Because it read your, I, can, can I see your iPhone, if, if you don't mind? Yeah, yeah, but, but it, won't, it won't open for me, though. Now, 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 why won't it open for me? Because I don't have his identity. Watch this, watch this. Or he hasn't trained his phone to recognize me. The only way I can get in his phone is if he gives me the code. Watch this. Or if he teaches the phone my identity. That's critical. That's critical. Many of us are being killed by people we gave the code to. And you keep crying saying how when you let them in. Michael. Seven people ought to just type code change, code change, code change, code change. Cold change, cold change, cold change. See, stop blaming the devil for people you gave access to. God told you to make your circle small. You got lonely and gave them the code. So when they came in, you are now saying, God, and how do you know God is changing the code based off of the prayer that you pray? See, when you pray for peace, then you lost people. You went to God and said, I'm lonely. And God said, but you told me to change the code. You said, no, I didn't. I asked for peace. He said, the only way to get peace is to lock certain people out. Identity. Somebody say identity. The dream died or death to, this is cold-blooded, potential. Death to potential. Death to potential. I was having a conversation with one of my best spiritual sons who I love with all my heart. Minister Jason, and I told him, I said, Jason, I'm in one of the weirdest places, but the freest places of my life. Yesterday, I said, I said I'm so happy to be me. D, D, I want you to catch this. I really, really, really want you to catch this. I was suffering pre-pandemic from the worst case of identity crisis you have ever seen. Because who this church and the city of Birmingham wanted me to, meet, wanted me to be was working. What do you do? When what you do works for everybody but you. I'm not saying I'm going to be crazy. I'm not saying I'm going to do anything out of, out of the will of God. But I love singing. But the current culture said if you're going to be a preacher, put a suit on. Put a tie on. Don't be creative. Don't, 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 don't sing. Don't want to write plays. Don't write scripts. And the Holy Spirit said, Michael, when you come into the fullness of who you are, when you come into the fullness of who I am and who you can be in me I don't think you heard me I will then start unlocking different features in you okay okay 
Okay, okay, okay. Who who got Instagram? A anybody? You you like your Instagram? Who love going on Insta Story playing music? You know, sort of like how the snap feature. You know what I'm talking about? Where the music be playing? You know, you know, music playing. Then you hold a button down and you just kind of dance for a minute. Then you put it in your what? Story. Did you know your iPhone could do that? No, Pastor Mike, my iPhone can't do that. Yes, it can. P pull your iPhone out. I'm finna show you right now. I'm finna unlock something you didn't know you had. Okay, pull your iPhone out. Okay, go to photo. Go to photo. Okay, are you on photo? Hold the photo button down. Okay, hold the photo button down. Now slide over to video while you're holding it. Do you see how it's videoing? And now you're recording my voice and you at the same time. And you can record music that's being played. Your phone has something you didn't even know it had until somebody spoke a word that unlocked it. Yes. I don't think you heard, okay? Who, who's, ever, who's ever been texting, who's ever been texting and made a mistake and it took you forever to get your, 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 your cursor to the point to go delete the E? Did you know you can hold the space bar down? If you hold the space bar down, it'll let you slide to wherever you were in the sentence. That way you can get there quickly. You didn't know what you were holding. The same way you got a phone and don't know it, I'm going to argue you got you and don't know you. Because until you dive deep into the manual, you will never unlock everything that's in you. God said, Michael, there is a unique anointing coming to Rock City that those who connect to Pastor Mike and Rock City, there's about to be unlimited access to all of who you are. I am unlocking potential and gifts. But the problem is, God cannot unlock it if you ain't focused. Because if I give an immature saint too much power, he'll kill himself and the people around him. An identity, this is cold-blooded, crisis. And what do I want you to understand, Pastor Mike? It's cold-blooded. It is time for you to be unique. You caught that. Some of y'all caught that. I don't think everybody caught it. It is time for you to be unique. I don't, I don't think you caught it. Not U-N-I-Q-U-E, but Y-O-U-Nique. See, because it's one thing to be unique. I want to argue you can be unauthentically unique. Some of you are being different just for the sake of being different. I'm saying, no, when you be you, your own individual uniqueness is about to unlock so much that God has for you. And to everyone, I might preach on Easter weekend, who's sick and tired of the devil messing with you, blocking your best blessings, and turning your life upside down, go and get your faith right and declare over your own life, I am hmm, what God says I am. Just holler when I get to you. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I, I am blessed when I come. I am blessed when I go. I am more than a conqueror. I am got the favor of God on my life. I am the next millionaire in my circle. I am the first millionaire in my family. I am the first college graduate. I am the next business owner. I don't have to wait till I get it. I can shout I. That's why your song resonated with so many people. You say, God says, you're whoever I need you to be. You're the I am, you are. And I want to submit, we serve a big I am. And when you serve a big I am, you can walk in the fullness of being a little I am. This is critical, I need you to catch this. Why, Pastor Mike? Because verse four says, so he ran ahead. And I cannot stress, Rod, the criticality and the importance of prayer. I can't stress again the criticality and the importance of prayer. Why, PMJ? The fact that he ran ahead speaks to the strength of his spiritual discernment. It speaks to the strength of his spiritual discernment. Jason, can I speak something over your life? If you never have their money, they'll never have your discernment. Tiffany, that was cold. See, people can't figure out why you succeed and why you survive. It's because while they're still standing here, something in you told you to go there. Look around the room and say there. Look around the room and say there. A hundred people out of type there. God said, I'm giving you spiritual insight on your next there. God said, while you're busy crying here, 
if you get in my presence, I'll show you what's getting ready to happen. There. Somebody shout there. There. There is where the favor of God is. There is where your breakthrough resides. There is where your next decision is going to shift your life. There is where your promotion is. Look around the room and type in the comments. There. 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 Hello, right. With no, yeah, yeah. with no meeting, he breaks out running. It says, I need you to catch this now. He went, so he ran on ahead. I see something that's worth talking about, something that's worth talking about. Bartimaeus starts shouting. The lepers decide to move together. Zacchaeus says, I tell you what, with no announcement, millennials, no Facebook posts about just watch me work. No selfie in the gym. No picture of the job application. This brother moved and nobody knew. This is my season for silent moves. I don't think you heard what I said. See, I'm finna walk in so much favor and in so much strategic spiritual discernment now that folk gonna be looking at me saying stuff like, when you did that six months ago? But why you didn't say nothing? For what? For what? Had I told you, you didn't see it no way. Where you going? There. Why you looking for new jobs when you said you was happy here? Something in my spirit said, go there. Hold on, right? Grandmama tried to tell you the importance of there. She said, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my rolled away. It was there. She said it was there. By faith I received my sight. And now if you tap into your there, you will get a hand now. Somebody shout there. Look at me. Don't bust another move. You ain't prayed over. Don't start another business. You ain't prayed over. Don't release another song. You ain't prayed over. Don't date another person. You ain't prayed over. Because I've discovered when it comes to relationships, there are people, many of you are falling in love with folk who fit your here. but don't match your there. This is why marriages are so unhappy. Cause when we were both ratchet here, it was cute. But now that I got boardrooms, you don't match. I'm talking heavy. That's why divorce is so high in the church. Because most of us, most people get married in their here. And then they become. And who they were in love with here does not match their there. I better leave that alone. I better leave that alone. Somebody gonna get broke up with tonight. I feel it in my spirit. It's six friends who gonna get a phone call today. I love y'all, but I can't hang no more. What we do, y'all didn't do nothing. Then what's the problem? You just don't match my there. Sometimes God won't give you what's next until you leave what's now. Somebody ought to just tag me on Instagram with that statement right there. Sometimes God won't give you what's next until you leave what's now. <laughs> Pastor Mike, you know how much money I'm finna walk away from? But can you see there? Yeah. Pastor Mike, you know how scary it is, but there. Yeah. Where would the children of Israel be had Pharaoh opened the gate, but they were too afraid of there? Jesus Christ. When we find Zacchaeus, he's in a must moment. Jesus says to Matt, Zacchaeus, I must stay at your house. I want to say this, and seven of y'all are going to catch this spiritually. Don't miss your must moments. 
your must moments. You're getting into my sermon for next week now, but your must moments, the importance of having a spiritual pastor or a covering in your life. I'm, I'm, I'm mature enough to now to understand for some people, I'm going to be a spiritual father. For some, I'm just an instructor, but I want to argue you need both. You need both because good covering makes you psychologically weatherproof and emotionally bulletproof. Good covering makes you psychologically weatherproof and emotionally bulletproof. Psychologically weatherproof, those prophets from B. Moore said, can you stand the rain? Weatherproof. You're mentally prepared to handle when the weather change. See, a good covering prepares you for weather changes. This is why you don't trip as hard as you used to because you're psychologically weatherproof. See, see, when you get under a good covering, you go from perms to naturals. You go from being processed to getting organic stuff that can help you build the strength you need. So now when it rains, you don't even trip because you know it was built for the weather. I, I, I don't think you caught what I just said right there. It's being psychologically weatherproof. Weatherproof, that's called covering. But emotionally, bulletproof, which means you can take shots. See, when the weather change, it messes with your psyche. When hits happen, it messes with your emotions. Bulletproof. So now if they leave, you feel it, but you don't fall apart. Michael, oh my God, I'm going to say that again. Somebody ought to pull your phone out right now and get ready to record this next statement. Because you are emotionally bulletproof, you feel it, but you don't fall apart. So you cry, but you don't cry all night. Or better yet, you bleed, but you don't bleed out. Michael, that's only for seven people who've been hit this year and you're still standing. That's only for seven people who this past week stuff jumped off. The weather changed, you took some shots, but you can say, though he slayed me, yet will I trust him that I will still lean and depend on God I'm built for. He's in the right place. Look at verse five. When Jesus came to the place or the position, he runs ahead and he climbs a sycamore tree. Now, if I had time, I would talk about that sycamore tree and how precious it is. I would talk about the color of the sycamore tree. Most sycamore trees have gray coloration on the roots. Gray coloration on the roots. When you see sycamore trees, it's a, it's a, it's in a, it's in a class by itself. It's not brown like most trees. The roots are discolored. And the older it becomes, it turns more gray. It's cold-blooded. If I had time, I would talk about the fruit that comes off a sycamore tree. But I, I don't think any of that is necessary to kind of build my point today. He climbs in a tree. When Jesus comes to the place, he looks up the tree. I, don't, I think you missed it. Out of every place he could have went, he climbs up a tree. I, I believe, I believe as Jesus was walking, he looked at this brother with issues in a tree and said, he looked like me. Because anybody who knows the Bible knows during Easter, he's put on a cross that's made from a tree. This, this is cold. He gets to the place and watch this. He looks up at him. Can, can I free you? I want to speak. Make sure you're in the right place. But not just in the right place, but in the right position. Pastor D, Pastor Hollis, help me with the statement. It's, 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 it's missing my mind. Because it's one thing to be in the right place, but it's nothing to be in the right place with the right posture. Because posture is, oh my God. Position is where you are. Posture is how you act where you are. Thank you. Position is where you are, but posture is how you are while you are where you are. Did you catch that? Pastor Mike, I'm on the stream, but your posture wrong. I'm on the stream, Pastor Mike, but your posture wrong. You've been on your phone the whole while I'm preaching. You might as well not even watch. You missed what you should have called because you gave in to distractions and distractions pull you out of focus. You in position, but you ain't in posture. 
What if Zacchaeus would have been in the tree distracted? What if Zacchaeus, Deanna, would have been in the tree complaining? Got me in this tree. I'm richer than all these folks. What if Zacchaeus would have said, I tell you what, move or I'm taxing y'all. Something in his spirit knew this was different. Make sure you're in the right place relationally, financially, mentally, spiritually. This is why I can't go to mama church and grandmama church. I got to go where my spirit is being fed. I'm growing mama. I'm growing daddy. Love me, but you can't pull me out of position. I just can't come to church so you can show the old saints how big I done got. I'll do a video for you. I got to be tuned in 1030s on Sunday because it helps my position and my posture. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said, this is cold-blooded. Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for today. I must stay at your house. I must stay. I told you don't miss must moments. This for my spiritually mature saints. This is why when a man or woman of God says so, and they say God said, that's a must moment. Or when you're getting spiritual advice, and they say say, the Holy Spirit told me to blank. If you respect the word that's on their mouth, that's a must moment. Did you catch that? That's why I don't say God said a lot. That, that, that's, why, that, that, that's why even when you send a Curtis to Montgomery or Pastor Hollis where, to, to, to Tuscaloosa or, or whoever's next, wherever we send you, th- this is why I have to pray before I send you. I need you to catch this because if you get dirty, I got to get in it with you. Because the Bible says the blood lay hands on no one suddenly lest you partake in what they're in. Because I need them to understand, don't love me for my resources, but become deaf to my must. I don't think you heard what I just said. That's why I honor you so much, woman of God. All the doors opening in your life, and I believe it's from the bottom of my heart. No matter what call you get, first thing you do is shoot a text. That's why I'm so proud of you when all these doors opening for you. First, pastor, what you think? Oh, my God. God's put some incredible people around me, prophets and, and world changers who understand the criticality of must moments. I must stay at your house. When they saw it, they all began grumbling, saying he is going to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. This is so cold-blooded, real soft, right? And I want you to catch this. All of that was my introduction. I want to give you my Easter message right here. I can't pay you back. I can't pay you back. Zacchaeus does something that we should take and make applicable to our life. Jesus does not even fix anything for him. That's what most of us miss. Nowhere in the text does Jesus fix anything for this brother. He don't make him tall. All he do is change his life. Life change must lead to an exchange. The proof of your life change is in the evidence of your exchange. Your struggle with giving is the proof that you don't believe in your new living. Because when there's been life change, there must be an exchange. We see a principle that we can take and make applicable to our life. Zacchaeus, who is a sinner, realizes, I can't pay for this. So you know what? Half of what I got, take. He's a businessman. He ain't foolish. I can't give him my all because I got bills. But I will give him what I can. Then he says, if I've defrauded anybody... I'm going to give them back four times as much. Four being the number of earth, north, south, east, west, up, down, left, right. In other words, the same, I took it in one fashion, is going to come back to them in every direction. And like this brother, God, I stand before you today a small man sing a song called big but a small man filled with issues I sometimes worry I sometimes become engulfed with fear and doubt 
Because, God, I understand all that I have and all that I am is not because of my gift, but because of you. And my declaration is a simple one today. I can't pay you back. The sweet hymnist from Israel, David, summed it up like this. What shall I render for all of your many bitter fits towards me? What shall I give you for all of your benefits who pardons my iniquities? Now that word pardon is cold-blooded. It means you were convicted, but he let it go. It means people caught you, they tried you, and convicted you, but my grace. I need seven folk who guilty to just type grace. Seven folk who know you did some stuff that if the truth got out, it would destroy you, but God covered you. Seven folk ought to type grace, 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 grace. Grace did it. Why did you survive? Grace covered me. Why are you healing me? Grace doing it. Somebody ought to shout grace. I'm getting my first vaccine shot tomorrow. And somebody said, well, you out the blue now. I said, no, I'm not. I survived pre-vaccine on grace. While we trust doctors, don't ever get it twisted. My hope is built on oh, nothing less. Truth of the matter is I'm somewhat confused like everybody because they say the vaccine is 95% over here and 94% over here. Then yet if you turn on the wrong news station, they say it doesn't cover this and it doesn't cover that. So Pastor Mike, what are you doing? I'm trusting God. I'm doing what I can to protect those I love. I'm ready to see my family again. I'm ready to be in the presence of God with the presence of the people I love the most. I'm operating on grace. I can't pay him back. Jason, what amount of money would you pay God to guarantee your babies woke up in the morning? I can't pay him back. What type of money would you pay to ensure you never ran out? Can't pay that back. What type of money would you pay that COVID would never hit your house? I can't pay him back. Anybody got sick in the last year? I can't pay him back. One of the young ladies who started this church with me, and if you're watching, she lives in California now. Her name is Jasmine Bledsoe. Or her mom passed right before I came out. Dad passed when we were doing youth ministry together. She would give any amount of money to get on that plane from Cali, land in Birmingham and hear the doctor say, we don't know what happened, but mama back. I can't pay him back. God, I render you my life. I don't know who's watching me right now. Today is a good day to rededicate your life to Christ. I want to call our church into order. Some of you have been drifting, floating out of God's presence. It started small with a little of this, and it started with a little bit of that. And now truth of the matter is you don't even feel God's presence on you anymore. I call you home. I call you back into his presence. I speak that that chill you feel coming down your spine right now is the presence of God in your room. God, I speak by faith that you're coming back to the heart of worship. So devil, I hear you whispering doubt, whispering fear, whispering false accusations. I command you to the pit of hell. And I decree and declare that we will think on these things. Whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is kind, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is of good report. Lucifer, you have no authority. We take dominion of this earth. We take dominion of our territory. That we match your fight 
in heavenly places. I commission intercessors. I, I, I commission prayer warriors across this globe for an infinity and a pure passion of prayer. Here's the beautiful thing that Pastor Darius said last week. If Jesus is all God and he's on the cross, nails didn't keep him on the cross. Submission did. He didn't stay on the cross because the nails were that strong. I believe the text says if he wanted to call down a legion of angels, he could have. How does a nail hold the nail maker? He was on the cross because he was submitted. He was submitted. He paid a price he did not owe because we had a debt we could not pay. So God, I give you my heart. I give you my life. I can't pay you back. I can't pay you back. But today I start by rendering my heart a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. Do me a favor. I want to make the devil mad today. I want to prophesy that 500 people are giving their life to Christ or rededicating their life to Christ today. Somebody got to clap. I'm speaking bold. I want you to text home right now and I want you to be honest with your pastor. Pastor Mike, I've been in church, but I done slipped. I've been coming to the rock, but I ain't been focused. I've never heard of you found you today and I'm getting my life to Christ. Pastor Mike, we found you in a pandemic and this church has been a blessing. I want you to come home today. What better day to give your life to Christ? What better offering to give to God today than you? Somebody just type home right now to 28950. Can we praise God in advance for everybody who's given their life to Jesus? Come on church. Here's what I want you to do. Here's what God has laid on my heart. And this isn't a must moment. This is a discernible moment. God laid on my heart. He laid on my heart this particular number, 198, 198198. My family, we're sowing $198. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, this is the recompense seed. I am the God of the recompense. Who knows what recompense means? What does it mean, Pastor D? It means to pay back the recompense. For the Holy Spirit says there has been a bounty on your spirit. There has been a bounty on your gift. There has been a bounty on your ministry. There has been a bounty on your goals. There has been a bounty that the enemy has dispatched his best spiritual bounty hunters to bring you down. That's why a spirit of heaviness hit many of us at the same time. That's why a spirit of heaviness, it wasn't that we were tired from ministry or tired from life. It was a different type of tired because the truth of the matter is many of us have been tired for a long time. There was a strategic attack on our ministry, on your life, on your family, on your business, on your dream. You have been wrestling with changing the purpose. God said, don't change the purpose, change the plan. He says, Michael, when you sow today, the God of recompense. We may teach on that this Tuesday, a special teaching on the God of recompense. He's getting ready to restore. When you sow, he's getting ready to restore. I decree and declare families are getting back aligned. That which you thought you lost was stored up in storage for you. And God is releasing generational blessings, generational favor, generational breakthrough is coming into your house. As a matter of fact, get bold, type your last name. I dare you to be bold and type your last name. And the Spirit of the Living God says, Recompense is coming over your bloodline that your children's children will begin to praise God for what you did that they had no idea about. For you are the patriarch of your family. God says, You are the Moses of your family. You are the Moses, real soft real soft I don't want them to become emotional you are the Moses of your family with a you have a Moses anointing with a Joshua work ethic 
God says, I am giving you a duality of anointings. That you will have the anointing to stand up to Pharaoh, but you will have the anointing to complete the assignment. You are a generational curse breaker. In order to be a generational curse breaker, you have to be uh, educated in the areas of your family and your life that are broken. And God says, I am about to start revealing to you spiritually the blind spots that have been labeled over your bloodline. Get ready. I felt that in the spirit. I felt that in the spirit that God says, I am opening your eyes to generational issues, not for you to walk in arrogance, but for you to walk in boldness and begin to speak over those areas of your family that have been down for generations. This is not a conversation you should have with grandmama. This is not a conversation you should have with mama and daddy. This is between you and God. You won't get credit for it. Won't nobody know you did it. But God said you get credit in heaven. God says, I am restoring the years that the I felt God on that right there somebody type recompense recompense that's the word I heard in the spirit recompense Zacchaeus life is forever changed in spite of his sin because he understood a must moment and he sold without request and don't forget I said this Jesus fixes nothing for him this is crazy church folk want miracles Zacchaeus just wanted an audience I, I want to read it again can you put verse 7 on the screen for me please verse 7 I tell you what go to verse 5 I'm gonna read it real quickly verse 5 when Jesus came to the place he looked up and said to him Zacchaeus I'm gonna say it again when Jesus came to the place who said Jesus Jesus said to him hurry down today I must stay at your house verse 6 and he hurried and came down and received him gladly verse 7 when they saw it they all began to grumble he has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner verse 8 Zacchaeus stopped and said go back to verse 1 you missed it verse 1 y'all missed it go to verse 1 they missed it you missed it you missed it. He entered Jericho and was passing through. Verse 2. Go to verse 2. And there was a man called by the name Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector. Verse 3. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was but was unable because of the crowd. He was small in stature. Verse 4. This go. So the man ran ahead, climbed into the sycamore tree in order to see him. He was about to pass through that way. Verse 5. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. Stay right there. I must come. I must stay at your house. For five verses, we see Zacchaeus, but we don't hear him. Zacchaeus does not open his mouth until the end. Can I ask you a question? I'm going to read verse 5 and see who sees the revelation. See who sees the move of God. When Jesus came to the place, he looks, Curtis, at Zacchaeus and says, hurry, come down. That's in order. I must stay where? Your house. Who invites Jesus to Zacchaeus' house? Jesus. What do you do when the oil on your life is so crazy? That Jesus makes an appointment with you. Nowhere in the text does Zacchaeus ask Jesus for anything. There is a shift happening in the body of Christ that we cannot miss. God is shifting us from making requests, from discerning to our presence. I, I want to say that better because Zacchaeus' posture was right. He got what he didn't even ask for. But because your posture is wrong, you can't get what you're asking for because you think you get what you need from God because of your mouth when in reality you get it because of your life your heart your heart verse 6 he hurried down and received him gladly verse 7 he still says nothing so look at this the first person who speaks in this story is who? Jesus the second group who speaks is who? the crowd when they saw it, they all began to grumble saying, he has gone to be a guest 
of a man who is a sinner. Can I free you real quickly? Can I free you real quickly? I see too much in the text. What you think is the issue ain't even the reason they don't like you. Because when Luke introduces this brother, he tells me his issue is he's small. When the Christians see him, they say his issue is he's a sinner. You insecure about something people don't even recognize. They not even hate on your stature. They... Jesus speaks. The crowd speaks. Now, I want you to notice the text. I want you to notice the text. Notice the text. Go to verse 5. I'm finna go. I just got to give it to you. I ain't preaching in a while. Hurry and come down. Verse 6. Watch this. He comes down and received him gladly. Verse 7. I can't believe he has gone to be the guest. I don't know the time. When I get to heaven, I got to ask God questions like, what's the time frame between verse 5 and verse 7? Because the language shifted. Verse 5, he says, I must stay at your house. Verse 6, he says, I come down and receive him gladly. Verse 7, they say, he has gone. So is this all symbiotic? Is it boom, boom, boom? Or is it boom, boom? Can I, can I play with the text? In my own imagination, okay, let's go to verse 5. Verse 5, Jesus sees him, come down. I got to stay at your house. Verse 6, he comes down and it's a time frame between and. They walk to his house. By the time we get to verse 7, the crowd who has been following Jesus is frustrated because they at his house but not in it. They haven't, they've been following Jesus, begging he got ahead of Jesus and received. So can't you see them outside the house? This don't make no sense. He in there with a sinner. All of us know what type of fool he is. He at the house of a sinner and the sinner says in verse 8, half of what I got, I get it. And I want to be very clear. Here's what's cold. He don't even say this to the crowd. He says it to the one who can forgive him of his sins. He says, and if, and if, this is cold. I'm trying to teach my ministers and my church to see the whole scope, clarity and depth. Maturity helps me see clear, but then I get depth. So I mispreached this years ago. I want you to catch this. He said, if I have defrauded, can I free you what maturity has taught me? They call him a sinner because they know he wrong, but he didn't know what he was doing wrong if it was a part of the culture if the tax collector before him did it and the tax collector before him did it it can't be wrong if they did it and live well and got away with it see a generational curse is deceptive because you watch people who are bound look blessed so if he cussed everybody out and got drunk and got a split level house it can't be that bad. So he looks at him with sincerity and says, and if I've defrauded anybody, I will give back four times, four times. I believe that number four is prophetic and he don't even know it. Jesus on that cross goes through four phases to me. Boom, crown of thorns, one hit. Ah, Nails in hand, two hit. Ah, uh, nails in feet, three hits. Pierced inside, four hits. Can I, can, I, can I speed forward? Jesus gets on the cross and says, I tell you what, since they sinned, I'm going to take four. I'm going to take four. I'm going to take your punishment because I love you that much. I'm sorry, God. I can't pay you back. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, 
you, Lord. things right now. Either you're giving your life to Christ by texting home or you're sowing 198 for the recompense. Either way, I want you to believe by faith that from this day forward, that which behind me. He says, what can I pay you back for your many benefits? You pardon my iniquities and you hide it in the small of my back, which means you put my sins in a place I can't see or reach. That's critical. That's critical total freedom. I speak total freedom over our church. Total freedom over our church.